Welcome everyone. This is our advanced placement on track framework webinar. I am Dr. Carolina Buitrago. I am Director of Impact and Learning at Mass Insight Education and Research. Here with me today is Dr. Anita Lavacumer. She's Director of Advanced Placement and International Bachelorate Programs Office of at the Office of Secondary Schools in Boston Public Schools. Our learning objectives for today are the following ones. By the end of this session, what we want to be true is the following. We want you all to become familiar with the purpose and the components of the AP on track framework. We also would like you to understand how to access this tool online, how to navigate it, and how to understand um, the online version of it. And lastly, explore some use cases for the AP on track framework. Before we get started, I would like to just provide some context of how these tools came to be and where this uh, AP on track framework, where it sits in the array of the AP success tools. The AP success tools is a toolkit that Mass Insight developed in the last couple of years with the support of the Gates Foundation. It, they all this toolkit is was designed for educators by educators. And we have three tools in total. The AP Equity Self-Assessment, which focuses on structural aspects of your AP program of the school or district at large. And we have the Classroom Strategies for AP Success and the AP On Track Framework, which are tools that focus more directly on classroom instructional practices. That is going to be our focus for today's session, especially the AP on track framework. However, as you will see soon, the AP on track framework links directly to the classroom strategies for AP success. So you will be getting at the end of the session a sense of both tools. Let's explore the advanced placement on track framework purpose and elements. The AP on track framework is really a tool that poses an invitation to educators. The invitation is to do a mindset shift from a deficit based understanding of students' performance to really questioning and examining what are the learning environments that we are providing to our students and how supportive those environments are to their success. When we support educators and schools, we often hear educators articulating things like the following. My students are not motivated. My students don't complete assignments. My students came unprepared for the AP classrooms, classes, for the rigor of AP classes. My students want to drop out. These are commonly heard sentences and phrases when we um, talk to educators. And while all of these pieces might be true, we usually respond to these comments with an invitation. We say, yes, we understand that, but let's shift a little the lens here. Let's explore what are the experiences that you as a classroom teacher, as a school administrator, as a counselor are providing to your students to support their persistence so that they can eventually succeed in an AP class. So the questions we pose, for example, are, is your AP class or examine if your AP class is a place where students feel that they belong? We have found an, empiri an uh, empirical research has um, evidence that uh, the sense of belongingness is fundamental to student success. Another question we usually formulate is, is my AP class a place that allows students to practice time management so that they can really navigate the competing priorities that students face? And so on. Is my AP class a place where students understand that even if they struggle with something at first, they can actually grow and they can learn and they can get better at it? Those are the things that the AP on track framework will help educators consider and strategize for so that they can incorporate specific practices 
in their classroom day-to-day -day happenings that will support productive persistence in students. So what is productive persistence? Productive persistence is a through line in the AP on track framework. It's a construct that is fundamental to everything that you will see in the AP on track framework. Productive persistence is really a combination of habits of mind, orientations towards learning, belief systems that allow students to persist and stick with something so that they can get to the end with success. But more specifically, productive persistence combines the following. A belief that one can learn even if the content is difficult. A strong sense of connection with peers, teachers, and the content itself in the classroom. A sense that learning, that the learning mate material is actually valuable and relevant and relatable. Positive mindsets. They believe that they can grow and they can learn over time. And the skills, the habits, and the know-how necessary to succeed. Success requires skills, very specific skills. Do we have those skills? Are we supporting those skills uh, being developed in the classroom? For example, the skill that is uh, a skill that is specifically related to success is the ability and the skill to seek help. Are we teaching our students to seek help, to feel comfortable seeking help, to understand how and where to seek help? So with this construct as a foundational through line for the AP on track framework, the framework identifies educational experiences that educators can provide in the classroom and in the school at large at four critical periods during the, the school year. So when we were designing this tool, we gathered together in many, many, many design sessions administrators, AP coordinators, AP teachers, non-AP teachers, Mass Insights AP team, Mass Insights school improvement team. We gather a whole lot of people, researchers at the Johns Hopkins University in the Everyone Graduate Center. And we ask the following question. What are those make it or break it points during the school year? for an AP student where we need to be extra intentional to introduce very deliberate and specific supports so that the students can stay and can endure the rigor and can get, can get to the finish line, take the exam and pass the exam. So after many, many conversations and workshops and uh, thought partnership, we landed on four critical periods. Strong start, the very beginning of the year, keeping up right before the holiday break, November, December timeline, the midterm reset, which is after the holiday break, January, February, and then exam prep, March and April. So as you can see, these are make it or break it points during the school year in which we have to be extra intentional about supporting our students in very specific ways to get them to the finish line. Let's break this down into more specific pieces. Let's start with strong start. As we were discussing the strong start, we identified that onboarding and orienting students in a way that feels connected, informed and empowered is fundamental to this uh, phase of the school year, to this uh, critical period. So in order for that to be true, build, building a strong foundation and bringing, uh, uh, establishing a school uh, classroom culture that creates that environment of support is really important. The other piece that we identified as, as fundamental in this uh, beginning of the year, in addition to the onboarding and orienting, orienting students to the expectations with clarity, is to really allowing students to have quick gains really early in the year so that they can build up the confidence and feel, I can do this. I can figure this out. I actually can be successful in a rigorous class. As the year advances, 
the Keeping Up Critical Period comes, and it's exactly where we are at right now in November, which is this period of the year where the competing priorities for students kick in in full. They realize, of course, that AP classes pose a lot of um, <clears throat> demands on them, but they also have other classes to tend to. They have house duties, household duties. They have employment duties in many cases. They have sports practices and so on. So there are so many competing priorities for students. And so supporting them in learning how to navigate those competing priorities is fundamental at this point in the year. They need to feel that the classroom provides a strong support network, that the adults in the classroom and in the school and their peers are actually a team and that they're all in this together. They're all going to push through and get through together. Nurturing a growth mindset is also fundamental. Again, as they struggle at the beginning with the demands and the rigor of the content that they are learning, really emphasizing and strategizing as you teach the content that they actually can develop the skills to be successful at this is fundamental. And providing opportunities for students to feel as agents of their own learning process. As we move into the uh, months after the holidays, we identified that the students need to reset. It's what we call kind of the re-mindset. The expectations need to be reset, kind of reoriented to the purpose of the class, to the value of the class, to the concepts that were key in the previous semester, to the students who are their peers and should be sources of support to their community, to their teachers. So it's a time to reset and provide intentional structures for skill building, for coaching for success, and for help, helping maintain a growth mindset. And I'm sure this will sound familiar to you, but as the exam, the AP exam approaches by March and April, students report high levels of anxiety. They really feel the anticipation of the exam and the imminence of the AP exam coming their way they start realizing that they may not be mastering all the content. And uh, the, the anxiety uh, increases and the stress levels go up. So at this point of the year, providing differentiated support, teaching anxiety management and explicitly preparing students for the AP exam can go a long way in easing the anxiety and helping them feel stronger and more prepared for the exam. So these are the critical periods that the AP on track framework delineates. <laughs> so for each of these critical periods in the framework, we provide a description of experiences that educators can provide in the classroom that are specific of each period that support productive persistence in students. And we organized those experiences under five domains that won't surprise you. Mindsets, students' voice and agency, classroom community and culture, AP skill building, and feedback and grading practices. So everything that you will see in the AP on track framework for each critical period is going to be organized under those five domains. So let's see how this looks like online. Again, the AP on Track framework is a free of cost tool that resides on our website. So when you go to our website, you locate the AP success tools, you click on AP on Track framework, explore the on track framework, and you will see the five critical periods that are clickable and a description of the domains and the, the, the structure of the framework. When we click on one of the critical periods, you will see a description of specific experiences that teachers can provide in the classroom. The yellow highlighted 
experiences were actually suggested by students. We ran focus groups with students and we also asked them, what helped you succeed in AP? Once you click in one experience, for example, here, the experience is um, about coaching students. I think I just restarted this, I'm sorry. Let me just go back to where I was. So we can click on each experience. And when you click on a given experience, you find the title of the experience, a description of the experience, and then specific classroom level strategies that you can use to make that experience real in the classroom for students. So this is where this AP on track framework connects to our other tool, which is called the classroom strategies for AP success. So when you go to our website, you can go directly to that link, the classroom strategies for AP success. Sorry, just it's the next slide. Here. And what you will see when you click classroom strategies for AP success is an indexing, a listing of over a hundred classroom level strategies that are organized under five filters, which correspond to the domains delineated in the AP on track framework. When you click on each of these strategies, you will see a description of the strategy's purpose, the expected outcome, specific action steps to act to guide you in the implementation, addendum or additional materials, citations were the source where we source these strategies and related strategies. So it's a very specific way of providing you information on how to implement the actual strategy. And again, each strategy corresponds to a domain in the AP on track framework. So these two tools, if you explore, it, explore them in tandem, you will make the best use of both tools. So now let's explore some use cases of the AP on track frame. The first two use cases we have seen in practice, the, sec the uh, third and fourth use cases described here are uh, suggested use cases. We still haven't uh, see seen them fully uh, being implemented, but we strongly suggest that the AP on track framework could help guide the actions of everyone either doing classroom instruction or supporting classroom instruction in a school. So the first use case is lesson planning and implementation. We are going to uh, provide an example of that. The second one is focusing the work of AP specific PLCs, which is what Anita is going to illustrate as they have, they're doing this as we speak in Boston Public Schools. And again, instructional coaching and informing instructional walkthroughs are two additional use cases that we suggest you explore in your schools. So let's go with an example of a lesson plan. So we are in the keeping up critical period of this year. And we're going to provide a sample lesson that incorporates on-track framework experiences with academic content. So oftentimes when we share this tool with teachers, we hear, this is really great. This is really important, but I have a lot of content to teach. How do I deal with these two priorities? I want to support my students' productive persistence intentionally, but I also have a very extensive curriculum that I need to teach. How do I combine both? So this is just a very preliminary way and an example of to invite you to start thinking about the design of your lesson plans in terms of organizing your content, your pacing guide, and incorporating elements of the AP on track framework in your lesson plans. So let's uh, use the photosynthesis. This is an end of unit lesson on photosynthesis. And the lesson plan is really about building models. So students will build a model of the steps of photosynthesis. 
They will use the model to explain how energy is harvested. Then they will evaluate other people's models and then they will learn to provide useful feedback. Let's see how with this structure of the lesson plan, we can start thinking about connecting elements of the AP on track frame. So students in their design of the model will have full autonomy during the model building period a process using each other as resources. So right there, this is an intentional element of students' voice and agency. The students will own the process of building the model. And they will decide how they're going to do that. And again, you can go to student voice and agency in the AP on track framework or in the AP classroom strategy, the classroom strategies for AP success and look for strategies that will help you um, promote student voice and agency. Students are given a choice how to demonstrate the learning. That right there is also student voice and agency. The model is, itself is what gets, um, the, it, the students get feedback on their model. So there is not a specific test, there is not a quiz, but there are ample opportunities for feedback. Students' creativity and imagination are tapped into model building. It provides opportunities for students who are more artistic and visual to shine. That right there could promote growth mindsets. For students who need different learning modalities and different ways of expressing how they are understanding the concepts to have an array of opportunities to show how they are understanding the concepts could lead them to understand that they can, they're capable and they can grow in their ability to acquire the concepts. Relies on teamwork and group learning. That right there is establishing a collaborative community in the classroom. Students receive feedback and have the opportunity to revise their models. Students learn how to provide feedback. Students learn how to incorporate and respond to feedback. That right there is a very adaptive feedback and grading approach. And it's again, enhancing this classroom community and culture where there is a sense of collaboration. We all support each other. We all help each other learn here. Discuss why it is valuable to make mistakes, how one learns from mistakes, and the importance of receiving feedback from peers as well as that of teamwork in solving problems. Growth mindset, feedback and grading practices, and also elements of classroom community. And at the end of the lesson, you could survey students and understand, have them articulate what mis misconceptions were cleared up what uh, understandings, understandings they improved with this lesson, what mistakes were corrected, and establish comparisons of the beginning and the end of the unit knowledge. So all of those are AP specific AP skill building and feedback and grading practices that are inviting to students to feel that they can do this. So we invite you to consider, consider doing this on your own and start venturing at incorporating elements of the AP on track framework in your own lesson planning. Think of a lesson, any lesson that you may consider as successful or an approach that you have adopted in your classroom. Think about the critical elements that made your lesson or approach successful match those elements with one or more of the five domains in the AP on track framework. And think if you can add an element that maybe you weren't considering before that you can add to your lesson plan. And finally, we invite you to be intentional, intentional at incorporating these elements in most of your lessons and to be clear why you're incorporating them. What are you trying to achieve? so that in your teaching, as you teach the content, you can be intentional about supporting your students' productive persistence. So now I'm going to pass it over to Anita, who is going to walk us through the work that, the wonderful work that they're doing at Boston Public Schools using the AP on track framework. Anita. Thank you, Carolina. Um, so my name is Anita Lavakumar. I'm the director of AP and IB at uh, Boston Public Schools. 
And we decided to intentionally use the on-track framework through Mass Insights research um, in almost everything that we are doing as an option to inclusion. Um, so what you're looking at on the screen here is a lot of our current initiatives, but we have a lot more as well. So we have the Building Up AP, and um, as part of that initiative, we're using the on-track frameworks. Um, part of building up is creating systems in place with our existing AP coursework. So through that, we developed the AP Advisory Board, and each um, representative of the AP Advisory Board actually is a teacher leader of each AP PLC group. So we had about eight AP PLC groups start up, and each of those teacher leaders filtered into the AP Advisory Board. Um, next slide. I know we have limited time. Um, so what we did with this is that Mass Insight had helped us develop the why, what, and how framework of how we um, discussed all of these initiatives within the advisory board and PLC. And we partnered together to come up with what that framework would look like. Um, and you can see here the why is to aim for that critical period that Carolina just talked about, um, particularly with the strong start and all of those as well. And then we moved on to the what. What's the best practice um, that we're going to look at here? How are we going to uplift um, some of the on-track framework pieces? And then we engaged in what's called the PDSA cycles for any type of inclusive practice that a teacher was going to utilize, how can they continue to um, use that practice and make it even better? So you can um, plan to use it, um, look at, you know, do it and then study it, act upon it. Are you going to keep it? Are you going to um, not use it anymore and abandon it? Or is there some adjustment that you might need to make? So these are the types of things that we included within our AP Advisory Board and our PLC groups. Next slide, please. We're going to share with you what we did during those PLC meetings. And what you see here is an example of the November and December PLC um, slides. So the why is shown to you here. And this is an example of the keeping up, the phase two, the critical phase two. Um, and here we shared with the teaching community, you know, how we want to, we've already had a strong start, and these are the important skills that we want to hone in on um, in order to keep the um, students engaged in the classroom. How are we going to deal with the ramp up of the coursework and make sure that students are successful with all of the um, critical things that they need to, to be? Next slide, please. And then this was the this was the really important piece to our PLC groups is the what. So at this point, what we did was we asked them to identify an inclusive practice or strategy and how they're going to use that in their content area. What are those pieces that they're going to engage in with the PDSA cycle? And for this, they can actually look at the on-track framework um, to come up with any of those strategies. They can also use one of their own existing strategies that maybe that they um, wanted to highlight with one another. Um, but here they would have this um, cycle of reflecting peer share um, and coming up with group themes as they were going through and refining their processes and identifying best practices among each other and their colleagues. Next slide, please. And what you're seeing here is um, an approach to being flexible with our model of the PDSA cycles. So we realized that maybe we were being a little too um, prescriptive and maybe we can offer some choice. So what you see here is on the left hand side of your screen, how to utilize the on track framework or the students experience through the student's experience with this PDSA cycle and how that would um, can be utilized. Um, and so there, we're walking through an example here on the left-hand side, um, looking at incorporating some of those, uh, those on-track framework pieces through the PDSA cycle and uplifting those practices, coming up with a prediction, looking at the data, and coming up with some step-by-step -step processes. On the right-hand side, you're looking at some teaching skills um, and 
in addition to the content. So the left on the on-track framework is more general, not necessarily content specific, but on the right, we have some success skills in addition to the content. Some teachers didn't want to do both at the same time. So this offered some flexibility for them while they were looking at, for example, photosynthesis and how to um, build a, minds, a growth mindset towards the FRQ practice questions and um, things like that. So this is just uh, an example of how we've used it at Boston Public Schools, but we do also use it um, in addition in a lot of the work that we do um, towards our inclusion PD across the district. Back to you, Carolina. Thanks so much, Anita. Um, so, Let's then now spend the last couple of minutes uh, while we're together exploring how Mass Insight tools um, are associated with some services that we provide so that uh, you can access these tools uh, free of cost on our website. But we also have developed a suite of services around these tools to provide support and um, uh, really help you use them at, at, uh, at its fullest. Um, by doing the following. So we have supports at the diagnostics level. Uh, we can help your school or district guide and support in completing the AP self-assessment, which again looks at and examines your program at large, the structure of your program at large and how conducive it is to equity. We can also support uh, strategic planning efforts, both to develop an AP equity plan, action plan, to increase your opportunities, the opportunities for students uh, to access and succeed in AP. And we can also, based on the AP on track framework, develop, help you develop and support you in developing an on track plan to grow productive persistence systematically in your students as you teach the content. And once we have strategic plans in place and action plans in place, we can also support the implementation of those plans uh, throughout the year and then the, the progress monitoring towards achieving your desired outcomes. You can choose your entry point. We can provide coaching both at the planning and at the implementation and progress monitoring level and at the diagnostic level. You can, your entry point can be the program structure at large with the AP equity self-assessment, or your entry point could be directly examining instruction and promoting um, improved instructional practices that support productive persistence development, or you can do both. Uh, this is something that you can decide based on your context and based on your needs. And lastly, uh, given the suite of services that we have and the expanded school improvement work that we do at Mass Insight, we invite you to take advantage of a pro bono one hour consultation opportunity um, that we are offering right now to schools and districts who are interested in making the most out of these tools or out of their improvement efforts. Um, we are here to support those efforts. This is a pro bono one hour consultation session. And uh, in order to, re uh, to secure that um, hour of consultation, you can email us at partner at massinside.org. Thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs>